Welcome to another episode of Operation American Dream. I'm your host, Craig Sewing, with co-host Amy Scruggs. Great to see you today, as always. Yes, where we honor those who fight in the country they fight for. we got an amazing show, but before we dive into all the awesome guests we have here, you are a rock star slash country singer slash doing awesome things. Talk about, you just got off the Midway, you got another event coming up. Yes, we just got off the USS Midway, fantastic event. And what's coming up next is really exciting for San Diego. It's the commissioning of a brand new Navy warship, the USS Rafael Peralta. And there's gonna be a giant commissioning ceremony. The biggest of the bigs are gonna be there and they just gave me the honor of knowing I get to sing at that. So that's coming you up July get to, 29th. Are you singing on the show today? I, I may sing on the show today. There we might did a, be a little moment. Facebook Live earlier. If you're not following the show, you got to find us there. But <laughs> There's always some fun stuff going on. Yeah. And you help us dial on these amazing guests. I'm excited for today's show where we honor our military. They uh, protect our freedoms. And so let's do something good for them today. You ready? Let's do it. All right. Operation American Dream coming your way right now. with all the politics of social programs and improving our neighborhoods, there's one thing that is for certain. A solid family can lift all of us up as a country. Joining us in studio, an expert on the subject, Craig Candelore, served in the Army, has now launched charities and really fuels. Uh, you're a very passionate man. You fuel this program called the Great uh, Dad Program. You also have a charity honor, honoring our troops. So you're doing it all, man. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about your service first. Thank you for that. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Well, I had a, a, a very unusual career. I did my f five years active duty from uh, West Point. I'm Army. I, I thought there were no other services, but... We uh, appreciate but, your service. <laughs> uh, but I did Desert Storm 1, and then I did Desert Storm 2. Last one, I was in charge of police development. Uh, exciting you know, proj project. Uh, very, let's say, the cutting edge of our foreign policy to stand up their military so we could exit. And your service has continued. Now you've launched a 501c3, honoring our troops. Tell us about that. Well, uh, when I came back, I was so fortunate to keep all my fingers and toes. I mean, I literally uh, had a few very, very close calls. Uh, we set up a nonprofit that provides basically free legal services. It's a self-help, but we do that once a month uh, at uh, VFW 3787. We have seminars specifically focused to the veteran, uh, VA disabilities, the discharge upgrades. We also have a career assessment called Compass. We have a mentorship program. And lastly, we've added peer-to-peer, uh, -peer it's called Vet-to-Vet, -vet because there's a really an endemic problem with suicide. So that I don't think is yeah. being addressed. So yeah. we're trying to help, help you know, our servicemen. Well, it's a tough subject, and uh, I genuinely appreciate all that you do. I mean, your service didn't stop in the Army. You continue to do this on the day-to-day. -day. It's just awesome what you've done with honoring our troops. Now, uh, as I referenced opening up the segment, there's a program that you've gotten behind, the Great Dad program. So you do see a lot of this stuff with, you know, there's a lot of politics involved in neighborhoods and crimes in inner cities. If you really look at it in the stats, having a dad at home is so important. So explain what your program does. Well, uh, in my day job, I operate the what they call the Men's Legal Center. Um, and just so you know, it's uh, as they say, women got the short end of the stick for a long time. Well, now the pendulum has swung, and we really men need better representation. Well, one of the programs we want to be on a positive note is to set an example, to have role models, positive father role models, because the alternative is actually the statistics are horrendous. Uh, do you mind if I read off a few? Yeah, uh, they're they're insane. Please. Well, just so you know, it's like eight times more likely to go to prison, five times more likely to commit suicide, twenty times more likely to have behavioral problems. 32 times more likely to run away, 10 times more likely to have substance abuse, nine times more likely to drop off from high school, 33 times more to have actually be subject victims of serious abuse, 73 times more likely to have fatal mm -hmm. abuse, and 44 times higher mortality rate. So what's a great dad program do? We want to take role models and put them forward to the community. Say, look, here are people that are, that are setting the example. They're setting the bar. Emulate them. And it's better for our you know, families, our community, and our nation. Well, you grow from the smallest core out, right? Absolutely. I mean, the government's the biggest thing that we have going on. But you, you grow at the, the nucleus of it all, which is the family. 
You actually honor people who do an, an amazing job of this. Recently, you had a, a gentleman that you rewarded with this. Well, we, we've just so you know, we started in uh, 2014. We have tw twice a year recipients. Uh, we had T.J. Zane in 2014. We had uh, recipients up to the last one was Richard DeLay. He's an E7. He has three children. Uh, he does a actually phenomenal job for his community. He helps the, the homeless. He helps in his church. Um, he has uh, three children, just so, you, so I get the names right. Alexander Christian, age nine, and Lucas, age seven. So he does kayaking, paddleboarding, biking. He does hiking just on the outside. And then he also has, you know, uh, book reading with his children, movies, bowling. It's just, he's just a phenomenal example. What he does, he takes his military leadership skills and he basically carries them over to his kids. And, but he also has a supporting wife named Michelle and he's just an awesome individual and I, we want to put him. I love forward. that you mentioned the wife as well because yeah, I know that we've targeted uh, men here today. Women, you are so important as well. How can we support your cause? Well, uh, you can, we can actually go to, the, to the, our website at Men's Legal Center. We have a, a how do you call it, a uh, button there. A, if you a have people, a tab, a we're, tab. Not, we're not the great savviest dad. tech guys here, right? <laughs> well, we have we great got a great dad. cause, we have big hearts, but you know, great dad. And you, if, if you want to base a, offer yourself as a possible recipient, or you know wow. somebody, please Honor support them. the cause. It's a great, it's a great opportunity to uh, edify people that are setting the example in our community. Craig, thank you for your service and awesome. continuing with your charitable work and honoring families and dads. Well, you know. Right now joining us in studio, I met Doug Davidson, what was it, months ago that we met? Yes. And uh, one of the things that you and I just hit off on from the moment we sat down in our studio green room was just our, our shared passion for helping the military. And I said, you know, with what you're doing on the charity, what you're doing with financial literacy and advocacy and the real estate side, I got to get you on the show. So I appreciate you being here. Uh, let's, um, you got a pretty cool story. You, you yeah. know, I think people have heard of the 22 push-up challenge. Yeah. I want you to speak to how you got involved with it, its meaning to you, and I mean, where you're at with it, which yes. is pretty cool. Yeah. Go ahead. I was challenged to do it 316 days ago, and the challenge is to do 22 push-ups a day for 22 consecutive days and then post it online, and the primary purpose is to create awareness for those with PTSD. There's 22 veterans commit suicide every day, which for me is just like I can't even sleep at it's night. Heartbreaking. Thinking, it really is. I yep. mean, during this show, there's probably going to be one veteran commit suicide, and that's just like unheard of. So, I started doing this, and I, and I was down at um, the Padres game one day, and I happened to be sitting beside a veteran who is a um, Vietnam veteran, hmm, wow. and I showed him a little video clip off Facebook and said, "Hey, here's what I'm doing." Well. He looked at me and tears were coming down his eyes. And he said, you have no idea what that single act is doing for us. Wow. So from that point on, I said, why stop at 22? I remembered also uh, a number of years ago, the Chicken Soup for the Soul book, you've probably heard of sure. that. There's a great story in there by Hillis Bridges who talks about a young kid who decided to commit suicide that day. And he went into school and he packed up all of his books in his locker because he didn't want to leave a mess. And he's walking home, and this is a kid who was bullied and not well-liked, and he dropped all of his books. And one of his buddies, not real buddy, but just an acquaintance, stopped and picked up his books for him, and they both went home. And that one single act of compassion saved that kid's life. Because at graduation, he went back to the guy and he said, thank you for saving my life. Sorry, I got And um, why did it save his life? Because somebody took the time to just be compassionate. And acknowledge him. And acknowledge him. And he said, well, all I did was pick up your books. And he said, well, you don't know that I was cleaning out my locker because I was going to kill myself. 
So I look at our problem with 22 veterans committing suicide and how do we fix that? Well, I don't have all the answers. But one thing I know for sure is compassion goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And if we each time see a veteran, stop and really acknowledge them. You know, a lot of people go up and they say, oh, thanks for your service. But they don't like really right. stop, look them in the eye, shake them, their hand or hug them. And, and really mean it, you know, like if, if that was the last thing you had to say to this guy, you'd say it differently than just kind of brushing him off, you know? That's a good way to look at it. It really is, and it takes 30 seconds to do that. And you could literally save a person's life that you day. Know, that's a really good takeaway for those who are watching the show and maybe you haven't served like someone like myself and, and you I have haven't not served, served as I'm well, actually right? a Canadian, so <laughs> I'm... <laughs> You, you know, know, and that's fascinating, are. too, is we have a show called The American Dream that we have every week, and it's not just about people that are born and raised here. It's about the opportunity to be here, and for this show, those who, who protect us. But, you know, it's a really good point to make that it's one thing to say it, it's one thing to act on it and really and really feel it. And if we yeah. all did that, who knows, maybe that, that number would go down of 22 a day, which yeah. would be, which would be a, a wonderful thing that yeah. we could do as a society. Doug, you also have uh, contributed to a charity of Wounded Warrior Homes. You have this 2-1-1 thing that you guys do. I only got a minute here with you, but okay. could you touch on that? Because I really would like to share your we story. support with Wounded Warrior Homes because they have, we're in the real estate business, so that's kind of a fit. And they're looking for homes where they can rent out to uh, transitioning veterans. And so we're helping them find homes, get them rented out, and then helping them furnish them. There's another organization we just started supporting, which is called Courage to Call 211. So any vet can call 211, and it's like a concierge service. They say, here's what I need. I need a bed. I need a mattress. And we talk to them, and they say, well, what kind of a couch do you want? Well, one that you don't, like, fall onto the ground, or a couch would be good. Yeah. Uh, we've helped support uh, veterans by completely furnishing their apartments, and we really feel good about that. Well, a, a good point to make to our audience as we wrap up here with you, Doug, is that you're a top producing realtor up in the North County area. Uh, we have you on the show. You, many, many people in your profession would come in here, and they would make it all about them. Of course, we avoid that on the yes. show. And uh, you came in here with a, a servant heart in uh, a, a leadership mindset for our military. Uh, and it was a very strong message. I hope our audience, if you've served in the military, or even if you haven't, you recognize uh, Doug Davidson as a top realtor in San Diego. I hope you can connect with him online. But if not, help the charity, or at least hear the message today and uh, let it ripple out into, into San Diego and beyond and, and make uh, the world a better place and help some of our vets. I appreciate the message, Doug. Thanks for coming on the show. More of Operation American Dream coming up next. third party to call the shots. Keep it fair. Choose Oakwood Escrow. Well, of course, when we talk about the real estate market, as it pertains to those who have served, something you got to know is our government gets this part right. VA financing, being able to buy a home if you served in the military with no money down, amazing opportunities. I'd love to help you take advantage of this. There's nobody better than Bill Gaylord, who runs the Gaylord Hanson team, who has a huge heart for the military. Amy interviewed him. Let's see what he had to say. We're back with Operation American Dream. I'm your co-host, Amy Scruggs. I have a very special guest here right now from a phenomenal mortgage company here in San Diego called Gaylord Hanson Mortgage. I've got one of the owners, Bill Gaylord, and we're gonna talk specifically about the VA loan and how we can help those future homeowners own a piece of the American Dream. Bill, thank you so much for being here hey, today. I'm so glad to be here. You're such a mover and shaker in San Diego. I've known you for a long time, and you've got a dynamic team. I know one of your expertise is is helping veterans get into homes. Can you tell me a little bit about the VA loan and yeah. why it's so special? The VA loan, and, and how awesome is the military? And the military families I that know. service, it's so great. But the VA provides such a great benefit to them with a VA home loan. Um, it allows them to use their BAH, basic allowance mm -hmm. for housing, to use as their mortgage payment when they purchase a home. 
And it's so incredible. A lot of it is just education, right? Education, education, and learning. Like a homeowner has 45 times the net worth of a renter. So, for example, a renter has $5,000 average net worth, where a homeowner is well over $225,000 as a net worth. The VA and the military folks, man, buying a home is so important for them to build that net worth for their family. Absolutely. Do you notice that they're not all educated that they have this? What do you, what do you and your team do to get that word out there to make a difference for them? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really just trying to create that message and work, and we work with a lot of different um, military personnel that come in and they get VA loans. And then it's kind of like a, a vein that kind of goes through the military, and this mm-hmm. group knows these, these people, and this group knows this people, and they, we start educating them almost one at a time. But we also have VA workshops that we do throughout San Diego, trying to educate mm-hmm. the, the military on what they can use for their VA home loan. It, it's the best loan out there. Unbelievable. It, you know, the interest rates are better. There's no mortgage insurance. They can do 0% down up to 612950 uh, And then we've done other loans for the VA upwards of $2 million. See, so that's it, incredible. You can, there's no loan limit. Mm-hmm. on the VA. So it's a very incredible loan program. Well, you and your team at Gaylord Hansen Mortgage have done a phenomenal job being team leaders. You guys are out there in the community getting this out there. I hope that everybody is following suit to get the word out for VA homeownership because it's so, so important. Thank you so much for being my Absolutely. guest today on the show. Thanks, Loved it. Appreciate Thank you, Bill. It. And we'll be back with more Operation American Dream. We're back with Operation American Dream. I'm your co-host today, Amy Scruggs, and we've got a great segment right now with the Phoenix Patriot Foundation. These guys are doing an incredible job. I've got Tony Viegas, and I've got Darren Isham. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. I'm excited to hear about it. I did a lot of research and checked out what you guys are doing, but I'm so excited for our viewers to hear a little bit more. Uh, Tony, I'd like to start with you. If you could share what is your foundation and what you guys do. Give me the heart of it. Well, I'm the uh, operations and office manager for the foundation uh, going on seven years with National uh, Veteran Service Organization, nonprofit. Okay. And uh, I'd like to think that uh, uh, we're not the average veteran service organization. We, uh, we come in with our, our veterans after the fact. They've, uh, they've been rehabbed. A lot of them have had homes built. They're established uh, uh, as far as getting ready to get back into society. And that's where we come in. We'll ask uh, the veterans we work with, what's your passion? What do you want to do now that you're here? And uh, with some of our veterans have had the guns to the head. That's oh where their gosh, life has been because right. of uh, PTS. Uh, we don't even say PTSD because we don't consider that a, a disorder. Uh, former Army myself, uh, my last two years in the military, I was a chaplain's assistant, but I had, had the opportunity to be uh, an acting chaplain for a tank unit. So I have an idea of what it's like out there in the mm-hmm. field for our guys and, and, and gals now. And uh, we will ask the veterans. Uh, we've got several, uh, many programs for the, at the foundation. Uh, what do you want? What do you need? Some might need shells built in, in their garage because they can't. Uh, but we make sure that they're, they're with us when we build them so they can continue. Oh, that's great. We've got uh, uh, our music program with Darren we'll talk about later. Uh, the veterans that are going on trying to be uh, musicians is a full-time, and we're helping too, actually, with their recording studio, uh, with their music, and we have them come up with us as well when we uh, uh, go that route. But we'll get grants together for them. Uh, it, and again, it all depends. Uh, some We have one veteran that wanted to uh, be a gunsmith, so we were able to open up a, a program for him to start doing that, and it varies. And because we are a national foundation, you never know what's going to happen in what part of the country, who does what, and so forth. That, that uh, is fantastic. I, I love what you guys are doing, and I know you've just touched on definitely music being a huge part of what you guys are bringing out there. I see that you've got something pretty amazing here with a guitar sitting in front of us, and we've got a couple minutes. I want to see what you guys are doing with the music program. Darren, I'm excited to hear what you have to share with that, and if you could kind of share what you guys brought in and what's going on with music. Yeah, definitely. So we, we create a, a music program. It's about two and a half years old now. And we had the idea of, of trying to incorporate music, which we all connect with, and how that can help veterans. Um, so we do a variety of things with the music program. Uh, it is grant-based uh, some aspects where we provide music lessons. Uh, but we also created uh, 
a rock cover band, which is a signature band for the foundation to help uh, facilitate the music program. So uh, we secure venues, so we get the veterans that we're working with up on stage that are musicians. Wow, and, uh, I, I'm a huge fan of that program, I gotta say. <laughs> I think that's the best thing ever. That's so fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so, and we, we actually took one veteran uh, from Temecula to Miami on a music tour, so uh, a wounded Marine had a, a music project that he was interested in and had an upcoming album, so what we wanted to do was really create an opportunity and support his passion, um, and, and really on the therapeutic side, you know, to see him share his story in front of the audience yeah. and get that recognition really we term as a mental victory. Uh, what so. incredible opportunity for them, and, and like you're saying, the emotional, mental well-being right. that this helps contribute to their overall health and balance is it's the best. Music's the best therapy there is, right? Indeed. You guys have a pretty exciting award coming up in Hollywood in November, am I correct? We do. So we have a, a second fame award that the band will actually be presented at the uh, Producer Choice Honors Awards at the Hard Rock Cafe uh, there in Hollywood uh, for Community Impact. So we're, we're honored to uh, have the band you know, continue to support the foundation and veterans' causes uh, and represent uh, everything that we're trying to do with the foundation. Where can the audience go and see what you guys are doing? What's the website for this? Well, we've got the foundation itself as the phoenixpatriotfoundation.org and the band is phoenixpatriotband.com. Oh, great. And we're on Facebook under the same names, uh, Phoenix Patriot Foundation and Phoenix Patriot Band. Wonderful. We yeah. want the audience to help, you know, grow your followers and uh, just continue to support what you guys are doing. I look forward to having you back to talk about upcoming events, especially concerts, thank you. anything that you're doing. And thank you so much for your outreach and what you're doing to bless the veterans and keep music going and alive. And thank you for being here today. Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you. you so much. And we'll be back with more Operation American Dream. We're back with Operation American Dream. I'm your co-host today, Amy Scruggs. This is a very special segment for me. I'm excited to introduce you to my interview here right now, and it's a phenomenal artist and musician that has done a ton of work for the military and veteran community in giving back since he was 16 years old, and I'm gonna bring you now to Ryan Scruggs. Hi there. Ryan, love your last name. Thank you. For the audience that doesn't know, this is actually my oldest son, Ryan, and uh, you have done a phenomenal job working with the military and veteran community. But I didn't bring you in here just because you're my son, but because you've done phenomenal things. And I wanted the audience that follows our show to hear from your perspective, starting as a teenager, what was it like working so close and doing events with the veteran and military community? It was definitely heartwarming. It always felt like I was doing something to give back, you know? Um, seeing the reaction of people's faces just doing something simple as playing music. It's something that you love, but it's something that they appreciate so much. Uh, it's, it was definitely an honor every single time going to all the different bases and all the different hospitals and each, each thing I did or each event that we did was always so different and so unique. It was, it was definitely an honor. We started with you pretty young. You started at 16, 17 with me and you were helping the other musicians and um, learning and, and helping with the gear and shaking hands and, and just helping bless people. And then you worked up into becoming my full-time musician by the time you were 18, 19 years old. And we've opened for some pretty neat greats in the country music business, but my best memories with you are what we were doing in the trenches with the veteran community. Um, my favorite time at Christmas time every year is when you and I go to the VA hospital for the paralyzed veterans unit and we go bed to bed. Tell me your experience from that perspective. Well, that's always that's always a heart warmer too. I mean, that one always gets you. You never you never walk out the same. It, it's it's seeing what they appreciate. The same thing, you know. They they appreciate so much mm -hmm. and they they love every little bit of it and they have all their attention on you. Like it's not like they're jibber jabbering. They're on you. And then uh, me and you, we always go to the beds of the people that weren't a part of it. Right. And it just, it, it gives you that, what you're thankful for moment, especially during Christmas time. That's the most special time. Absolutely. You know, to give back. Yeah, it was, you know, you and I, that's our bond at Christmas. We say, hey, that's our Christmas together. Um, when you were a late teenager, you came to me with a couple songs. Well, first in Huntington Beach in 2011, they asked you and I to write a song in remembrance of 9-11. That was, I mean, to, to say, okay, we have to write a song that commemorates 9-11 and Myself not being the songwriter, but you, I threw that on your lap at 19 years old. Tell me what it was like for you to put that song together. That was hard. That was a tough one. Such a dark topic, right? right. And uh, to write a song about such a dark topic, but try to make it light and try to make it to where it's not a really sad song and something that's just still has that power. 
it was a, it was a difficult task, and especially just having that one topic to talk about. And so we titled it. You titled it. We remember. Exactly. So that it was uplifting, and what I remember about what you did with that song is it talked about what happened and the planes hitting the beep, uh, buildings and people, um, you know, going through such heartache and tragedy. But then you brought it into a saying, but then strangers came in to help each other. The country together united in a way that we haven't seen in a long time. We're in a difficult time in our nation of the country divided and fighting. But at that time when 9-11 happened, we felt like the entire country came together. And I think that that was what you did such a great job with that song, making the song talk about the coming together, that we remember that we are the land of the free and the home of the brave. And um, you did a phenomenal job. Well, and that's, that why, that's why I tagged the, the national anthem at the very end it was just something that brought it all together and it is true like we do remember what happened that day but in the end we are the land of the free and the Absolutely. home of the brave. Absolutely. You also wrote another song called I Am a Soldier. If you could talk, touch real quick what that song is and why you wrote it. Well in all the events that we've gone to there was always a man soldier and every song and especially in the country music industry it's always about the man going out and the man doing this and the man mm -hmm. and all the other females that, out, that are out there that serve, they didn't have a song. And so I just, I decided to write a song and, and picture what it would have been like for them as a female to give their life away to the, to the military as well. And so. Awesome. What do you say we do it? Sounds good to me. Let's do it. No more high school beauty queen. No more pink and fancy things. I gotta let go. When it was time to say goodbye, all my father could do was stand and cry. As I said, Daddy, I'm gonna be all right. Cause I am a soldier. This is how I was raised. This is Keep my country 